Cool. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's nice to uh, to see you all out there. Um, I recognize somebody in the back. Uh, hello, good to see you. Um, I'm coming to you live from uh, Berlin, where apparently it is uh, the 24th of February, so that was yesterday. Um, and today we're going to do a uh, monetization uh, speed run. So we're going to talk about all of the great ways that you can monetize your game. Um, this is primarily derived from um, our experiences with our idol games. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that in our process um, around that. Um, but I think these are extremely applicable, um, generally ad, ad revenue based um, um, I, uh, pieces of advice uh, that I think will be applicable for all of your games. Um, so uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm Nate. That's me. I look like a chipmunk there. I'm the director of business development here at Calibri. Um, uh, in a former life, I was also uh, at an ad network. Um, so since we are going to talk a lot about ads, um, we're coming to this from the experience of having uh, worked on the inside as well. Um, so this should be nice advice that lines up with uh, whatever your goals are, which are generally to generate revenue. Um, so we'll talk briefly about our story so you know who we are um, and why you can trust this information. Um, we'll talk about our development approach, which I think is key to... Um, understanding where you can save money. Um, we'll talk about what an idle game is, um, just because it adds context for the monetization tips and tricks. And I think the way that we think about idle games um, is important for um, how, uh, how we think about monetization. And then at the end um, of our time, in about 18 minutes, we're going to have a Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, um, you can save them for then. Cool, let's talk about our story first. Um, so we actually began uh, a long time ago in a student apartment in Karlsruhe. Um, that is a photo from the development uh, of the of our earliest game, Idle Miner Tycoon. Uh, fun fact, I actually slept on that floor when I first joined, um, which I am uh, advised by our HR department to point out was not a requirement, um, but, uh, but I happened to be in the States and I needed a place to sleep. Um, so our first project that we did uh, was something called Front Yard Wars, which nobody's heard about because it failed. Um, and uh, basically, we bit off more than we could chew. Um, uh, so we wanted to make something that was sort of like a Clash of Clans. But uh, for a couple of students, this was uh, entirely not possible. Um, so instead, uh, we decided to start a new project um, that would be a little bit more manageable um, in a genre that uh, we believed in. And so we decided to go for an idle game. Um, that first game being Idle Miner Tycoon. Um, the way that we initially did this was by focusing on a simple prototype. Um, so what we really wanted to do is strip out all the things that were unnecessary. Um, so we could just focus on what would drive um, early retention um, and make the players happy. So um, we knew that um, you know those, those first couple minutes are extremely important. So the entire game was sort of tuned around, um, really, really focusing on that. And the early day one retention was extremely high. So this is just a screenshot from it. So uh, we were looking at 75% day one retention. Um, and if you tune there, it makes it a lot easier to make mistakes later on. But if you make mistakes early on, um, it's hard to recover for them. I think this is the first lesson um, that we have. And um, I think for game developers, um, it is true at every single level. Cool. Um, it worked. Uh, the game was good. Um, we started investing in marketing, and uh, this is a uh, revenue uh, screenshot from um, from the early days. Um, and you can see that it's climbing uh, pretty rapidly um, uh, once we were able to turn on marketing. Um, so we had filled all of the leaky uh, holes in our bucket, so to speak, uh, and so we could scale pretty aggressively. Um, in uh, 2017, we moved the entire company to Berlin. It wasn't too crazy. Um, we also released our uh, second idle game, which was Idle Factory Tech, and really decided that we're going to go all in on the idle genre. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, and uh, grew our company to 100 people. Perhaps you can spot me somewhere in there. Uh, hint, I'm wearing a black sweater. Um, we hit 100 million downloads, and... Um, then we were acquired by our lovely friends at Ubisoft to join the Ubisoft family. Uh, in that same um, time, we opened up a second office uh, in Bucharest, 
so that we could um, uh, expand our portfolio of idle games a little bit faster. Okay, and that brings us to 2021. Um, so we have three new idle games out, Idle Farm Tycoon, Idle Restaurant Tycoon, and Idle Pirate Tycoon. Uh, you can probably guess our naming schema there. Um, so some of the lessons, most of the lessons from today are going to be from Idle Miner Tycoon. A few of them will be from the other titles, though. Great. Uh, so we'll swing through our development approach um, a little quickly, uh, so we don't run out of time here. Um, the main focus of this is just to say no to everything. Um, the reason um, that we bring this sort of thing up is that um, it's all about opportunity cost. Um, so probably the best way to drive revenue is not to spend unnecessarily, and that includes your time if you're indie. Um, I think a lot of people forget about this, um, that spending you know, an extra three weeks or a month on crafting some narrative element that isn't really going to be seen by most players is probably not a good use of time and going to be counterproductive for you. Um, so we try to focus on principles of lean product development, starting with just basic mechanics, um, testing these against our, um, our group of beta testers within the company, then expanding to a group of beta testers outside of the company um, that are usually hardcore idle fans that we've um, found via the community, um, iterate a bunch until we get the, the proper look and feel for the game, um, and then uh, and then finally release uh, a beta version that we can test um, things like day one retention and early ARP DAOs. Um, that process looks a little bit more like this. Um, so you can see it's uh, maybe about an eight week process to build the first prototypes, um, including internal testing, another four weeks external, and this varies kind of depending on the project and how much uh, data we have or how much data we think we need. And then afterwards we just kind of scale up indefinitely. Um, finally, uh, once the games are scaled and running indefinitely, um, we're releasing updates every week. Um, so our sprints are week long. Um, this is another way that we save money. We don't spend a lot of time and effort trying to like force huge updates. Um, there are some that we will time, um, uh, and some because we have multiple teams working, uh, we'll have some that, that run in a week. Um, so that we can get those big features that especially the platforms that we work with um, love to, to hear about and to promote. Um, but generally, we try and push things pretty quickly. Um, so that looks a bit like this. Uh, so that's one development sprint per week. Um, we'll do the, the planning a little bit in advance, maybe a week in advance. And we'll try and do a bunch of the art about a week in advance so when the engineers are ready, they can just grab assets from uh, Dropbox or Google Drive. Um, this saves us an immense amount of time to do. Um, and so we've been able to kind of turn that into an expansion of all the features within Idle Miner Tycoon. So not just this basic idea of what uh, the idle games are, but also adding, you know, um, the opportunity to ex explore uh, the entire continent scent of, uh, of Idle Miner Tycoon, that world. Um, we added social features, like going on expeditions, um, and also things such as skill trees. Um, so it was through that process that I just explained that we were able to add all of these incrementally and improve them incrementally. Um, along the way, we're testing to make sure that all of those things are generating revenue um, and increasing uh, retention. Um, the biggest thing, of course, would be the event mines. Um, when we added event mines, uh, which are, so to give you a little bit of text on Idle Miner Tycoon, you mine for coal, then gold, then an increasing set of minerals. Um, after a while, we run out of minerals that anyone cares about. Um, nobody really knows what bauxite looks like, s smells like, sounds like, uh, how it's pronounced, no one knows. So we try to do event mines, uh, which are weekly events that um, will sometimes have really cool themes. Sometimes they will be like underwater mines, or there's a cherry blossom mindset. Um, and you can see uh, that looks like a mine from Chinese New Year from last year. Um, so we do these, um, and once we implemented them, they doubled our revenue. We didn't, yes, they doubled IAP revenue. So that is tip number two, uh, add events and they will be extremely profitable. Cool. Um, great. So I'm going to speak briefly now about what an idle game is and again, why it's very important to you to understand what your genre is and what the levers are that motivate your players within said genre. 
An idle game is an incremental game. It is a game you cannot lose. You just keep growing your uh, your progress. Um, that's super important. Um, when players get in, um, they are working to accelerate their progress um, and the rate at which they are growing. Um, but uh, they can't lose. Idle games break out into a bunch of different subcategories. On the very far left and more hardcore are the RPG games. Uh, this is the vast, vast majority of idle games are business strategy games. Um, you'll see this in every fashion. Sometimes it's just run a business. Sometimes it's a, um, you know, more abstracted, run a beehive. Other times it's more specific. Um, you know, run a weed business with uh, rapper Wiz Khalifa. Like this sort of thing would be idle. Um, and it just kind of depends on the curve of uh, where you want to take that. But those are all business strategy games. Um, there are merge games and clicker games, which are idle in a lot of ways. Um, but we won't talk about them because we don't make them. Um, so the key motivators for idle games are that they feel good. Uh, the sessions naturally ease the, uh, the player to leave, meaning yeah, after about five, 10 minutes, you kind of run out of things to do. You know that you're going to have progress in a couple hours, so you just come back then. There are always players that will try to min-max their time and um, spend an hour in a, in a session um, to get ahead, but those are in the minority. Um, and uh, the important thing there is that the mechanics are very easy to go from micro to macro gameplay, meaning... It's very easy to start playing. Um, the principles are very simple. Um, but if you want to, you know, go into like the deeper game mechanics and all the meta, um, you can um, you can discover all of those specifics, and then we sort of build you know opportunities and hooks for players to get involved in that aspect of the game. Um, as I mentioned, it always feels good to come back. There is no losing in an idle game. Um, we have short sessions. And uh, we have, um, you know, a deep metagame um, that players can engage with if they'd like to. Cool. Um, so I think the, um, um, yeah, let's get this. Uh, the important part here um, is that uh, we're going to focus on the business simulator ones because that's what we make. Um, and uh, the kind of core loop here is that you unlock a new business opportunity in one of these. Um, so you make a lemonade stand, you upgrade it, okay, a lemonade stand to a lemonade restaurant, and then you usually automate it. Um, so you find, you know, King Lemon uh, who can run this for you so you can focus on something else. Um, and uh, maybe he has upgrades as well. Um, in Idle Miner Tycoon, it looks like this. Um, so what we had to figure out is where the uh, kind of choke points were in the game. And so in the game, as you can see on the left, you start off by mining. Mined elements must be transported. And transported elements must be sold. So that means we basically have like three choke points. How fast are we mining? Also, in what quantity are we mining? Um, so do we mine one lump of coal a day or two lump of, lumps of coal a day? How quickly can we transport them up and down? Is it every minute, every two seconds? Um, and then selling, how fast can we bring them over to the warehouse to sell them, right? Uh, and how much are we selling them for? Those are key. Um, and so the kind of levers that we're working with there are, are um, how much does something cost to upgrade? How much money do I make when I've upgraded it? How long does it take to do any of these processes to upgrade, to mine, to sell? Um, all of those things are um, kind of like basically the core focus. It's money or time. Um, and because it's an idle game and you cannot lose, the only thing that happens is you can accelerate them. So you can, uh, or kind of flip them on and off. Uh, it's going faster or not as fast. Um, and this can all be done with the buy via either in-app purchases or advertisements, meaning on or off. Uh, with advertisements, very easy. You watch an ad. Um, with uh, in-app purchases, it's a little bit more complex because we have some boosts um, that last a bit longer, but overall, the principle is the same. You're manipulating money and time for the players. Okay, so now this brings us to the tips and tricks here. Um, so I mentioned this is the kind of core um loop here right and this is all visible on the screen at the same time I, when, when a player is is looking at the game um they don't have to click around they can just see 
one screen what this core loop is and where um, uh, the basic principles of, uh, of these choke points are. Um, there is metagame, but at core, they're thinking about how can I make this little circle go faster, right? Okay. So um, time versus money, right? So it's either I'm speeding up um, the uh, development of something, the production of something, um, or I'm increasing the length of a boost, perhaps. There's also a time metric. Um, or um, I'm just increasing payout or decreasing costs. I mean, that's usually it. So I have to decrease the cost to upgrade my mine, or I want to increase, and you can see on the right here, increase how much money I have made while the game was not being run. So the key thing about idle games that I did not mention earlier is that you continue to progress when you are not playing. So you play, you leave for four hours, you come back. That increment of four hours while you were gone, the game is still calculating how much money you would have made had you been playing and you were told when you return, you get that money. Um, so the very first and most important um, uh, ad unit that we found is the idle dollar ad unit. This is 25% ad engagement, meaning 25% of, uh, of players presented with this will watch these ads. They're hugely instrumental in driving revenue. Also, advertisers love these because you get that advertisement as soon as the, uh, the player is in there. Um, and they might click and download something, but then they come back and finish their game session. So it's good for us. It's good for the advertiser. Second one is an ad boost. Um, this one is not as high of engagement as the uh, previous one, um, but there's a huge number of uh, views per day. Um, so you begin to rack up all of these, these views. Basically, the way it works is that with the former one, whoop, um, let's pull back, yep. So when you return to the game, you can usually double, triple, or quadruple your revenue from when you were gone. So this is after you come back. Whereas in this one, you are increasing your revenue before you leave, double, triple, or quadruple, right? So then those are actually, uh, those compound. Right, so I've increased it while I was gone, and I'm increasing it more when I return. Um, so that's why we see really high engagement there. There's some that don't really work, we found. Um, so things that offer like really, really, really small boosts, like selling managers, we let people do in the game. Um, you get managers, you can sell them if you don't like their their uh, stats. People don't really care so much because they're not earning that much money. It's not very crucial. Those are kind of like one off um, and uh, not very popular. Um, we did find that, um, in some games where you have like a day night cycle, um, that, uh, being able to skip night, if you're generally not earning anything, or if it's generally not a productive part of the gameplay is a very popular, uh, ad spot. So in restaurant, for instance, in idle restaurant tycoon, you are, um, uh, you run a restaurant obviously, um, and you only generate revenue when it's open. So if you want to skip that period where it's closed, you can do so by watching an ad. Um, likewise, things where you just earn hard currency, um, or sometimes soft currency on a one-off, um, those can work. Sometimes they're very popular, um, and it really depends on the game. So we tested them in restaurant. It was reasonably popular. We're testing this in minor and it is super popular. Um, it all depends on your game uh, economy. Um, we've tested in other games and it didn't work very well. It depends on, on how that economy is tuned. Um, and another one that I think is going to be increasingly popular, especially given the changes to IDFA, um, which is a unique identifier, basically, that if you don't know, IDFA is a unique identifier um, that um, allows marketers to target users better. Um, Apple is um, restricting, going forward, going to be restricting the access to this, which means ads won't be as targeted, which means you probably won't make as much money off them. Um, so we've invested a bit of time into uh, no ads offers. So even though I'm out here extolling the, uh, the advantages of monetizing through ads, um, we are um, working on ways to uncouple our, um, uh, some players from this if they don't really want to see ads, particularly as the ads become less relevant. Okay. So um, we only have like about a minute left. Um, so I would say the other important factor as you're working on monetizing your game is going to be through ad mediation. Um, and it's not an ad that's 
it's important. It's about which ad from which network. Um, and I think the big thing here um, is that the world is moving away from a waterfall system where you show an ad for one network, um, and then you show or, or you ask for an ad from one network to asking for an ad for another network um, to a system where all of the ads are now um, going to be acquired through an auction. Um, the most, you know, we're almost out of time, so I would just say the most important part about this is just to um, test all of these, um, to test uh, the waterfall versus the header bidder. Um, the header bidder is the auction. The waterfall is the, kind of the old way. Um, and to use, uh, when you are testing, to use A-B testing in order to evaluate the old method versus the new method and focus on key metrics that um, are going to be driving your revenue. So that'll be things like ARP do, that is the average revenue per daily engaged user on ads. Um, your engagement rate, the percentage of players that are actually watching ads. The impressions, which is kind of like uh, just a, a pulse check to make sure that your game isn't crashing. And um, when possible to set up alerts in case things are, you know, uh, servers are melting down. Here's an example of some of our alerts. Um, uh, in case you know, there's a sudden decrease in traffic, you want to make sure, or increase, which can also be bad, you want to make sure that those are um, stuff that you're looking after. Um, so I think we're about out of time. Um, there's a few other types of metrics that we uh, calculate, like lost revenue. Um, and there's tons of other monetization strategies out there, like um, season passes that we borrowed from our friends um, at Supercell um, that are extremely popular. But um, that's all we've got for now. So I will turn things over to the Q&A. Hey, Super. Thanks, Nate. Really, really great. Um presentation um as you can imagine a uh, lot of stuff let's say about let's say um ads and I iep revenue so hang on uh, let's let, let, let's just pull them up here well i guess the first one is what's the split between iap and ad, re ad revenue for you guys uh sure um so generally um we've seen a, around a 50 50 split and then it kind of waffles back and forth depending on um, optimizations that we're doing. So we're always trying to push one to be a little bit more than the other. Um, and so it'll kind of go back and forth um, between those two. But 50 50 is good. Gotcha. Gotcha. Then there was another one. Um, sorry, guys, can we just stick it up there on the screen? Yeah, it was about um, with, with the IDFA stuff, which is coming in. Sorry enough for giving the, the super tough one, right? Especially what, what sort of, what sort of, because you can imagine like a lot of people watching are very kind of, let's say, let's say interested, let's say in what's, what's happening here and interested in asking with, with the peers. And especially, let's say in your particular genre, uh, do you guys see, let's say, are, what, do you, what do you think you should prepare for? What do you think is going to be coming? You know, how much of an impact is it going to have? Um, sure. So we've run tests. Um, we've all, uh, we've also talked to a bunch of our um, partners uh, across Ubisoft and, and other um, studios um, outside of Ubisoft. Um, IDFA will be a hugely impactful um, change to um, ad monetization. Um, the rate that people will willingly um, uh, consent for increased tracking is generally pretty low. Um, so I think um, it, I would say the monetization is going to take, a, let's say, a huge hit. <laughs> um, uh, and it's going to be um, also kind of rippling effects out to, um, you know, how much you can acquire users for. You might see your DAUs drop if you can't acquire them for as much. Um, so the main thing I would say to prepare is to diversify uh, your revenue. Make sure you're not dependent on just one or two. On the ad network side, you're not just dependent on one or two of networks. On the um, mediate on the um, on the other side, to make sure that you're testing out more ways to increase through IAPs, like I mentioned. So either just like getting really good at sales or um, focusing on particular items like um, no ads offers. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be super interesting, isn't it? Let's say, cause I'm sure a lot of people have got a lot of stuff in the barrel, you know, re ready to go. So very interesting to see what, let's see what the, well, what the first couple of, let's say months are going to be like, right? Really. I'm sure there's a lot of great creative, let's say monetization people working on a lot of this interesting stuff at the moment. Yeah. It's going to be a little crazy, I think. Um, um, but I think there's probably a bunch of opportunities there Absolutely. Um, for clever developers. Yeah. 
Super. All right, man, listen, it was wonderful to have you here. Thanks so much, let's say, for, for, for such a great presentation. Catch you again.